$159, that's right. That's how much it costs nowadays to get flying FPV. And we're gonna find out, is it worth it? This is the Tiny Hawk Light Kit. And today, we're gonna to put it through its paces. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here. And if you're getting into FPV, this one might be up your alley. Just how cheap can it get? We are looking at the cheapest kit on the market, the Tiny Hawk Light Kit. It is coming in, I'm gonna put some pictures on the screen, at $159, which is pretty crazy considering how expensive this hobby can be to get into. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you some of the pros, the cons, the things I like, but most importantly, we're gonna go fly it around upstairs, and there is a reason we're not flying it outside, which will become very evident once you see the flight footage, and we'll find out, is it worth it spending $159, or should you spend a little bit more? So let's show you what you get in the kit. It's basically everything you need to get flying. You're going to get the drone itself. Uh, you've got your goggles right here, which can detach from their little uh, screen thing. You've also got your ELRS radio. So these parts are not new, but what is new is this right here, the actual Tiny Hawk light drone. Now, let's throw it on the scales. I'm gonna show you exactly what makes this a little bit interesting. It also comes with some fairly large batteries, so you're gonna be getting a pretty decent flight time. You might get one or two batteries. I'm not sure what it comes with because uh, as a reviewer, I was sent a couple of extra, extra batteries so I could fly it around a little bit more, but they are 750 milliamp hour batteries. So pretty chunky batteries, especially for a whoop size. Let's throw it on the scales. Coming in at 35 grams. So it is definitely on the heavier side as well. And it has an awful lot of plastic around it. It's got two little rubber bands to hold your battery in. It has a proprietary Emacs battery uh, connector on the back. I'll put the name of it on the screen as well. But check this out. It is actually a brushed whoop. So in the past, things like the Tiny Hawk or some, let me get them actually. Here we go, something like this old Mobula here. Most of the time these are brushless because they perform better, they last longer, but they're also more expensive to make. So it's gonna be interesting to fly this around for $159 to find out, is it worth going back to brushed or is brushless the way to go with spending a little bit extra money? So let's do it. Some things to note as well, there is no DVR, so I'm gonna be recording my DVR that is on these goggles on a set of sky zones. We're gonna be flying those and you're gonna be seeing the image from there. As far as the radio goes, I have to say, I've reviewed this plenty of times. It does take like an 18650 in the back and you can also charge these by USB, which I really like. You get a couple little extras like props and some little tools. One interesting thing though, that, let me just get it actually. You don't get a carry case, that's probably worth mentioning as well. But you do get, let me open this up. I'm not going to use this, but some people, uh, it might be good for them. It basically clips into the top of your radio, this little attachment right here. And then you can sit your screens inside here. So if you wanna fly this, not wearing the goggles on your face, but by looking at the screen, you can do that. Uh, and it's pretty easy to go through. Like everything else, it's pretty standard. It is designed for people who wanna try FPV at one of the cheapest possible prices out there. So let's go do it. Let's show you my impressions flying this thing around. And there's definitely some things to note when you're gonna see this flight footage. So let me show you that in three, two, one. It is crazy windy outside as well, but let's do this. I'm gonna put it in beginner mode just to start with because we are flying indoors and also too when you arm it takes a little while for the motors to it's like you've got a little bit of a delay okay so we're just going to float around me it is very very stable and you can hear the the wind again still howling let's go down here oh. It's very controllable. Let's see if we can go down the stairs. Oh, heading down here. And we're outside now. Oh, and I, oh, that. Okay, we did just get absolutely smashed by the wind, by a gust of wind. Let's try the flip over after crash, which is this one. We should be able to then, um, no. Let me let me go get it and come back. All right, the goggles are a little bit heavy. I don't know if this looks uncomfortable. Is it going to arm now? Yes. All right. 
I'm still getting that little bit of eye strain that feels uncomfortable. Let's flick it out of here into expert mode. Uh, or am I in? I'm in expert mode. Oh, okay. Now, yeah, I really can feel this straining on my eyes, but my throttle position, even for a hover, right now is at like 60%. So let me just show you how little power this has. So go down here, please. Bob. Oh, oh, please, no, no. Can I save this? No, I'm upside down. Let's see if we can flip over. My flip over after crash is stuck. But what I want to do, because it's so windy outside, it wouldn't be a fair test to show you. I'm going to try and fly up the stairs at full throttle. And this is where I want to show you just, it doesn't have enough power for what I want it to do. So you can see, I, and I've also shut the front door. So there's no wind, nothing like that. It's pretty fairly stable. I've got it in expert mode. I'm going to hit arm and I'm just going to go full throttle up, like 100% throttle and watch how slow it climbs compared to other craft. Full throttle, where is, oh God, I'm going down the stairs. Where am I? Oh, here we go. Can we, can we get this back? Why, why can't I ever recover this? All right, now in my testing, I'm realizing that maybe that's not coming through. I am gonna take it out the front and we'll just fly it outside. It's gonna get smashed by the wind but at high speeds, it, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so we're up here. Let's head out here. This is full speed. And look, it's dropping up full throttle, full throttle, full throttle. Ah, that's, that's probably a prime example of like when it's slowly descending, I'm at that full throttle the whole time where most loops would be able to punch out. This just doesn't have the power and you lose even more power when you're trying to go fast because you're putting that thrust, I guess, in the direction or making velocity in the direction that you want to go. And when you still need more thrust to get it off the ground to continue to gain altitude or at least not descend, that's like a prime example of what's happened. Let's see if we can get this one back because it is all the way out the front. Am I going to have any luck? Uh, I'm going to have to go get it, but for me, it's that lack of power that really lets this craft down. This is a different example, and this is recording on a SkyZone screen. So you'll see a bit of waving in the video. That's to do with the receiver on the SkyZone little screen that I have. That's not normally with this. So you're not gonna be seeing this in the goggles that you'll, you'll get with this kit. But the flight characteristics, this is on another day of testing, are important. So this is like full speed, and you can see I'm not trying to go that close to the ground. That is almost like full throttle when I'm trying to punch this thing out, it just cannot do high speeds and continue to gain that altitude. So remember, ignore the, the wobbles on the screen and everything like that, but trying to, I was like, normally a whoop could get up over that little step, but because I was coming in at some speed, I just could not have the amount of thrust that I needed to pop it up. So even trying to do acro and recover some rolls and flips, that's not gonna be possible with this. Where this was okay though, was where, when you've seen back at the start of this flight footage of just cruising around inside an office, that's where it is okay. But other craft can do that and other Emacs craft can actually do that beginner kits and still then have the capability to be able to go outside and, and have some good times as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm not really a fan of these brush motors. They're just not doing it for me. I think here we try to do a full punch out. Like this is, this is like it. All right, now here's the important part. Would I recommend to get this kit? And I have to say for me, this one's a bit of a pass. Usually Emacs makes some great stuff to get people flying, get them into the hobby. But the big letdown for me was actually the drone. I feel like it's too heavy, the amount of power you get from these little brush motors and they're gonna degrade over time. It's just not really worth it. I couldn't do any punch outs. I actually found there a couple of times when I was trying to fly around, especially when I went and did some extra flights outside where it just couldn't pull up. I couldn't have speed and also gain any altitude when I don't normally have that problem with any whoops. So you can't take it to racing. It is really suited for if you just want to float around and experience FPV, but there's some other better kits out there as well. Like the Emacs has another one. It's a little bit more expensive. I'm going to put that on the screen. I recommend that one 10 times over instead of this one. Now the goggles, they haven't changed at all. It's a pity that they don't have DVR. I do like you can detach the screen. 
I still struggle focusing just a little bit. I was getting a bit of eye strain when looking through here. And the radio, it's ELRS. I like that. It's probably uh, one of the stronger parts of this little kit. So it's gonna get some decent range, all that sort of stuff. But none of that really matters if the actual drone that you're flying isn't powerful enough to do the sort of flights that you want to do. And another part as well, I was also trying to record this on my sky zones with some DVL, like a different sky zone, like a separate screen. Let me show you. This one right here. So when I also tried to record some DVR on here, I was getting some weird artifacts based on the receiver that this had. So I don't know if there's a bit of a mismatch between whatever camera and VTX is happening here and the sort of receiver that is in this sky zone screen. I had no issues with my sky zone goggles. That's the DVR that you saw, but that's just something to note as well. If you have this, uh, I'll put a link to this one as well. I use this screen quite a bit. I was getting some weird interference. I don't know if that's because the camera is a really cheap one or anything like that, but yeah, overall, I have to say for me, this one, uh, Emacs, I think I would recommend your other products for getting people flying, even if it's a little bit more money over this. It really is the lack of power that let this kit down for me. It's got good flight times, big batteries, everything like that. I like everything is included, but if I can't go fast or at least at a medium pace and gain altitude and I'm gonna crash into the ground, then it sort of makes the whole kit suffer as well. So anyway, put your comments down below. Or would you get this one? Would you spend a little bit more and get like a brushless version? All that sort of stuff. If you wanna know the best price too, check out DIY FPV. Like I built that website for you. You can list like ready to fly kits there. You can list everything to find the best price on the product that you wanna get and find out which country it's in stock in. All that sort of stuff as well. Go, go check it out now. The, the link's gonna be down below. Anyway, happy flying.